David, we spoke before. I know you were a great believer that having the vaccine could prevent the individual getting very seriously ill. Uh, but now, when you look at this, uh, at, you know, these 40,000 people, uh, and we know more about COVID and more about the vaccine, isn't there a justifiable case for these people being allowed to be reinstated? Absolutely. Um, uh, I mean, good evening, Nigel. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Um, we have a health service that is desperately short of workers at all grades, and we've got 40,000 people out there who want to come back and work in the NHS or in the health sector at large, we should be getting them back in. Um, I mean, I can fully appreciate the decisions that were made when they were made. At the time those decisions were made, we believe that a full vaccination would reduce your risk of catching it by about 32%, and then risk of transmission further, about 60%. But that was very much in the time of Delta. Um, COVID's moved on now. We're in the Omicron wave. We are seeing, we're actually starting to see people get sick again. But importantly, we now fully appreciate that the vaccine's main role is in protecting the person who wants it. And uh, within our country, we have the right to make decisions about our own body. People can choose to smoke. People can choose to do other things that are harmful. If they choose not to get a vaccine, they should be entitled to it. And now we know that being vaccinated doesn't give us the same level of protection for transmission as uh, with Omicron, with Delta. We mm. need to get these people back in the health service as quick as possible. Yeah, I mean, those arguments, David, and you and I discussed it at the time, was why in the end I, I chose not to get the booster, uh, because I wasn't convinced uh, that by having it, I couldn't catch it or pass it on. A quick thought, if I may. Uh, there is a, a growing voice out there that says, yes, OK, you can tell us that having the vaccine helps to protect us as individuals. But a growing voice out there saying that, you know, cardiac arrests amongst young men are up by 80 per cent. I mean, there have been side effects of this vaccine, too, haven't there? Um, I mean, yes, there's no doubt that there have been side effects of the vaccine. Um, the vaccine is causing... Uh, myocarditis, that's inflammation of the heart muscle, in about 0.02% of adult males who get it under the age of uh, 35. A very, very small proportion. But just to put that into perspective, COVID itself is causing exactly the same myocarditis in about 40 times, 40, 40 times greater risk of from COVID as you get from the vaccine. And actually, a lot of these cardiac events, a lot of these cardiac arrests that we are hearing about are actually associated with catching COVID rather than the vaccine. And, and there has been a lot of misinformation that's been put out about it. That being said, at the moment, if you are fully vaccinated with your primary course and you are under the age of 50, your risk of catching COVID and getting severely unwell with it is sufficiently low that we're not recommending getting the booster. Uh, for those of us who are over the age of 50, actually the risk of not having the booster is greater than the risk of having the booster. So for me personally, I was very happy to go there and get this bivalent booster, particularly knowing that the new variants of COVID, uh, the ones that are just yeah. in circulation yeah. over the last few months and causing hospitalizations, I'm actually seeing people going to ITU again, people needing the drugs that we haven't seen since the Delta wave. So for me, it was that decision. But I'm very much of the mind that if people have the information and they decide not to, that is entirely their rights. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed for that. And there we are, folks, that there is a, you know, there is a, a change of thinking. Um, around this. Now let's go to the front lines because Kate Blythe is director of a care home group, The Healing Well, and she has got homes in Blackburn and Blackpool. And Kate, I understand that you lost 14 members of staff, people that work for you in this vital sector. Um, just tell us what that effect has had on those homes. Well, first of all, good evening, Nigel. Thank you so much for bringing this, uh, airing this subject. There are so many care providers that have warned me to be very careful as to what I say on this programme, as they know I'm quite outspoken. And I said, well, I'm talking to the right chap. Um, <laughs> uh, it was devastating, <laughs> uh, absolutely devastating. Um, these were seasoned carers. 
Um, these were not apprentices, and I have no issue with apprentices. These are mature people that had been in the care industry for 20, 30 years. You could not replace the experience that these people had uh, to the point where in the Blackburn care home, we never even had the virus, period. Not ever did we have the virus in the Blackburn care home. This year, uh, the hospital sent us a lady. They said they tested her. She was negative. Well, the following day, we tested her as we do all the time. Our infection control protocols are bar none. And we found that she'd actually come in with the virus. So we isolated her. It didn't go any further than that. And that was the only incident that we'd actually, in the whole period. So losing those staff, nine members of staff, in the Blackburn care home, the hours that the management team were putting in, I did 60-hour shifts consecutively. I will be 66 on New Year's Day, so I'm no spring chicken. Uh, and to, um, to actually do the hours, uh, the area manager, the manager of the Blackburn branch, the deputy manager, it was all the management team that stepped up to take over the shifts where we could not fill them. It was horrendous until we could manage to get more people in. Blackpool was the same. We didn't have the virus in the Blackburn, uh, Blackpool care home either until a district nurse came in to give insulin to four residents. And at that time, we went to test. Well, I was on the safeguarding committee and I was also vice chair for the care providers. So consequently, I knew a lot of the uh, people that I needed to contact. And I spoke to Rachel at uh, Blackpool Victoria Hospital, uh, uh, to, to uh, Lorraine, sorry, and I said to her, look, from now on, nobody walks through these doors. I don't care whether they're police, paramedics, district nurses, they don't come through. They can verify they do not have this themselves. She passed it on to four of my residents in Blackpool, and they all four died. And yeah, after we I mean, cleared it, we'd done a full infection control, and we were free and clear of it, and yeah. we've never had it since.